did you know you can extract the email address of a sentence regardless of where it's located? How about create a list of the top 5 highest priced items from a table? Well, Excel's been releasing dozens of new features, so let me show you 5 of their best ones with the exact scenarios of when you might need them. In number one, we have the choose calls formula, which lets you choose which column you want returned. In this table over here, let's suppose that we just want to see the date, the beverage, and the price per unit. And if you want to follow along, you can download this exact same Excel file in the video description, which I recommend so you can learn the formulas properly. So we would type equals choose calls, hit the tab key there, and the array is simply the entire table. We'll select that with control shift down, control shift right, comma, and column number one, it goes from left to right. So date is column one, then two, three, four, five. So we're gonna go for the first column, comma, beverage is our third column, comma, and the price per unit is our fifth one. We'll close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see that's extracted the three columns that we wanted. Right now though, the prices aren't quite in order, so we can change that by adding the sort function inside. So we would put sort, hit the tab key, and at the very end over here, we're just gonna add a comma. And for the index, we wanna sort based on the third column over here, which is the price per unit. So we'll put a three, comma, and the sort order, we want it to be in descending order. We'll close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see that we go from the highest priced item all the way to the lowest. Instead of the entire table though, we only want the top five. So for this, what we'll do is go back inside of the formula and we'll use the new take function. Hit the top key. This is fine as our array, comma. And for rows, we're gonna put six rows. So it's gonna be the header plus the top five. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see we get the top five highest priced beverages. And this is just the first of many super useful formulas. So let's take a look at the second one, which is the text split and the text join. Over here, you can see we have this set of text that we want to split into three columns. So we can just use the text split formula for that. Here's the text, comma, and the column delimiter in quotations, we're just going to add a comma. That's essentially the separator for us. Wherever there's a comma, we want it to split into a different column and we'll add a space in there as well. Close the quotations, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. Awesome, so that's working very well, but how about if we have something slightly different, like for example, having the first name here and having the last name over here. How does this work now? Because we don't really have a comma between Kylie and Townsend. Well, we're going to have to get a bit more creative with the text split formula. We're just gonna go back inside of it and under the column delimiter, we somehow need to add two. One that it's a comma and then a space and the second one when it's just a space. And for this, we can use the curly brackets and add the two separators inside. So in quotations, one is just a space, comma, and the second one is a comma and then a space. We need to close those curly brackets, close the parenthesis for the entire formula and hit enter. Now you can see it split the first and last, as well as the ages too. And we can just drag this down by going all the way to the bottom like so. If you understood the text split formula, you'll probably get the text join quite quickly. So let's take a look. We'll just type text join, hit the tab key, and suppose we want to now join these four columns that we just separated and to split each of them so they're not just all together. We can put in quotations a comma and a space as the separator comma, and then we want to ignore any empty cells. This doesn't really apply to us here, but comma, and for the text, we can just select all four columns, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. Now you can see that it's added the first name, then it's added a comma, last name, the age, and the pass or fail. The text split formula works great in the previous scenario, but that's not really the case in one like this where you have a message and we want to extract the email address. It's not really consistent. Sometimes the email is at the end, while other times it's in the middle. So that's where the next formula that we look up comes really handy. But first, as you'll often be using these formulas to analyze data, another great resource is HubSpot's 
free introduction to data analytics report. They're kindly providing this completely free 50 page PDF that you can download using the link in the description below. In the file, you'll find a complete breakdown of what data analysis is, what types of data analysis there are, and some best practices as well. It's not just a report full of text though, it also includes supporting visuals to make sure you understand. This resource is great if you're a beginner, as well as if you've already taken a fair share of statistic classes like myself. I personally find this most useful to refresh my memory on some of the key concepts and techniques. So I recommend you head over to the link in the description below to download this completely free guide from HubSpot to level up your data analytics skills and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. In number three, we have the regex function. This formula will help us find and extract complex patterns of data. So let's take a look at this example where we have the password and we want to verify whether the password contains a number element. For this, we'll type equals regex. And keep in mind that this formula is still very much being rolled out. So you might not have it in your Excel version just yet. We're going to choose the regex test hit the tab key. This is the password, comma, and for the pattern, we're actually gonna have to write a bit of code, but in case you don't know how to, we can simply ask ChatGPT. As you can see right over here, I've just asked it to create a regex to help me identify if there are numbers in this list of passwords. And this is all I'm going to need to add in the pattern, just this middle part, let me do that. You can see I've just added the pattern in quotations here. I can close the parenthesis and hit enter. It's giving me true for the first and then false for all of these. This one has a 19, so it's true again. So it all seems to be working correctly. That was just an easy example though. To take a look at a harder one, here's all the messages that we've got and we want to extract the email, which is something we couldn't quite do with the text split. Because this is very inconsistent, we have characters before the email and sometimes we have them after the email as well. So instead we'll use the regextract function, hit the tab key, this is the text, comma, and for the pattern, again, we'll just ask ChatGPT. In this case, we just asked it to extract an email address from a sentence, and here's the code that it's giving us. I've added all the code in here, and now I can just close the quotations, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. It works for the first email and as I drag this down, you'll see how it works for all the other ones, regardless of whether it's a Gmail, an Outlook or a me.com. In number four, we have the group by function, which is a great alternative to a pivot table. Let's take a look over here with this table. And let's suppose that we want to find out all of the products and the sum of sales for each. Well, we can just use the equals group by function the row fields are all of the products. We'll select those with control shift down, comma. The values are going to be the sales amounts themselves. Control shift down, comma. And the function we want, we want to sum all of the sales. So that's what we'll put in here. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. Awesome. Now you can see that we have all of the sums grouped by each product. And we can further customize this. So right now we don't have a header, but we could add that by adding another comma and under field headers, we'll say yes and show comma. And we could also remove this total down on the bottom by saying no totals and hit enter. Now you can see we have the headers and no total on the bottom. We could also find something like the percentage of the total. So what's Coca-Cola's percentage out of the total sales? And for this, we'll use the new equals percent of function this is the data we want comma and the data all is all of this area right here press the f4 key to lock that close the parenthesis and hit enter so coca-cola has 31 percent and as we drag this down and take the sum of all of these it should give us 100 so that's the one i can change this into percentage format and you can see that's all looking correct in number five, and before we get into the bonus formula that very few people know about, let's take a look at the AI formula. For this, it's actually an add-in that's super easy to install. We just need to go to add-ins over here and click on more add-ins. We're just gonna look for one called ChatGPT. Hit enter, 
and it's gonna be the second one right here. Click on add if you don't have it installed and continue. Now you should find it all the way to the right hand side. It's going to pop up. Right now we're in the free trial mode. So let's take a look at it over here in this table. Suppose we wanna find out which country and continent all of these cities are in. For this, we can use the equals ai.fill function hit the tab key and the example is all of these above. This is what it's referencing, comma, and the partial are the ones that are partially completed, which are all of the ones on the bottom that only have the city for us. We can close a parenthesis and hit enter, just let it load for a second and you'll see that it shows all of the countries and all of the continents correctly. That's just one example though, let's go over a slightly harder one over here. You can see it's actually the same example as in the regex function where we wanted to extract the email address. With the regex function, we had to use a good bit of code, but here we don't even need to do that. We can just do ai.extract, hit the tab key, and this entire area is what we want as the value, comma, and we want to extract the email address. I've just typed email address up top here, so I'm gonna link that. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. And you can see that it super easily extracted all of the emails. Finally, we have the bonus function, which is the dated if. Let's take a look over here, and it's most useful to find the difference between two days. For that, we'll type equals dated if, and you'll notice it doesn't show up. That's usually the case in Excel. I'm not quite sure why it happened, but the function still works correctly. We'll open up the parenthesis. The start is going to be just the order date, comma, and then the end is the end date, in this case, the delivery, comma, and we want to find the difference in days. So in quotations, we'll just put a D for that, close the parenthesis and hit enter. So it's telling us it's 95 days between these two. We could even change this from a D to an M for months. And you can see that it's giving us three months. And the same thing goes for a Y for years, which should be zero years as it's less than an entire year there. We just saw the tip of the iceberg when it comes to useful Excel formulas. So if you want to learn some of the most important ones, check out this video over here or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.